So you made a decision, you're ready to buy, you're looking for a house in Saratoga Springs and you're not quite sure what to do to get yourself prepped for it. Well, you came to the right place because in this video we're going to be talking about seven things to do before buying a house in Saratoga. So stick around here because the last one you're not going to want to miss. Hi everybody, my name is Chris McMahon. I am a local real estate agent right here in Saratoga Springs and the entire surrounding area. So if this is your first time to my channel, don't be like 85% of the people who just watch part of it. Don't get all the information I'm putting out there because I'm putting a ton of information out there. All kinds of videos about real estate, the community, attractions, all things like that. So make sure you subscribe, click the bell, get notified. I don't want you to miss anything here. So let's get moving on here. We're going into seven things to do when buying a house in Saratoga Springs and we're not gonna waste any time here jumping in with number one here and that's make sure you get out there and you check your credit score. This is gonna tell you a couple of different things. First of all, it's gonna have a lot to do with your interest rate. Okay, the higher the credit score, the less of a risk a lot of these lenders are gonna see you, so you're gonna be able to qualify for a better interest rate on that loan, which over a 30 year loan can mean can amount to quite a bit. So get out there, check that credit score. If it's not where you need it to be or even where you'd like it to be, then put a plan in place to start improving that credit score so you can get qualified for that mortgage, so you can get out there and you can get that house. All right, number two, how much can you afford? We want to take a look at that. So one thing you want to do is you're going to want to get out there. You're going to want to talk to a bank, a lender, a mortgage broker, something like that. They'll give you a pretty good idea. If you don't know where to turn to, reach out and get a hold of me. I've got some lenders that I've worked with that do a great job at helping people out and educating them. But as a general rule, let's look at this for a second. It's usually about 28% of your gross monthly income will go for payment interest and insurance so those three things are 28 percent. so let's put that into perspective a little bit here let's say you're going out and you're looking to buy a house your gross monthly income is ten thousand dollars all right ten thousand dollars that means 28 percent of that is twenty eight hundred dollars a month could go towards your again interest principal payment and taxes okay all that stuff set aside for that so twenty hundred dollars a month so figure that out and then it'll kind of give you a better idea. And like I said, everybody's in a different situation. What you really need to do is reach out, get a hold of a lender, talk to them. They'll help guide you through that process the best. Okay, let's talk about options for down payment here. This is number three that we're talking about here. A lot of this is going to depend on what type of loan you got here. You got a conventional loan, you could be looking at 20% down. So for every $100,000 you pay for that house, that's $20,000 you may have to come up with for a down payment. So that can get up there a little bit. I mean, think about it. You know, if you got a $200,000, $300,000 home that you're purchasing, that's $60,000 in a down payment that you got to come up with. Okay. So keep that in mind as far as that. But there's other type of loans as well. FHA loans can be as low as 5%. I've heard as low as 3 as well. But think about that. 5% for a $300,000 house is now every hundred thousand you're paying is five thousand that's now what for three hundred thousand dollars fifteen thousand dollars a big difference between the two so there's pluses and minuses to both loans again something you're going to want to talk to a lender about kind of weigh your options see what's best for you and for anybody out there va loans my veterans out there if you're watching this va loans very important you could possibly qualify for as low as zero percent down zero percent down to get yourself into a new home that's a great thing for you guys so Get a hold of me if you have some questions on that, I'd be more than happy to answer them for you. Okay, number four, how much can you afford to borrow? Let's talk here a little bit. Pre-approval, pre-qualified. There are two similar things, but there is one major difference things. Uh, and this is what you're gonna have to go to a bank and they'll help you figure this out. So pre-qualified. Pre-qualified is the basic step. It's the first step in everything. You go in there and you talk to the bank and they basically ask you the questions, you tell them I make X amount of dollars, this and that, and based on all that information that you give them in that conversation, they'll tell you what you are pre-qualified for. So what you wanna do is you wanna take that the next step up here, which is pre-approval, which basically takes that first step, but now you provide the documentation 
with financial information to back that up where they could confidently say, yes, you could definitely qualify for it. So the first step, you're just telling them everything. The second one, you're basically proving it. You're providing W-2s, pay stubs, proof of employment, that kind of stuff. And then you go through, check all your uh, credit history and all your information and tell you how much that you can qualify for for a loan. All right, number five, and this is a huge one that you really want to know about, and that's condition of the market. And a lot of people don't think about this before they jump in and say, hey, I want to buy a home. But you really got some big factors in here that you want to consider when you're out there looking to purchase a home. It's a good idea to reach out there to a local real estate agent like, hey, maybe some guy is sitting in front of you right now that's got his information in the description below. Feel free to reach out, call, text, email, whatever you got to do. I can help you with this. This is the step where I can educate you on demand, prices, um, inventory, uh, give you some idea of what kind of competition is out there for you. It's supply and demand. This is a huge part, not only for all markets, but especially holds true for the real estate market. So when demand is high and inventory is low, those prices tend to come up. Same as in reverse. When there's a lot of properties out there and demand is low, those properties tend to be a little bit cheaper. You get more bang for your buck on that one. So reach out to me. I can definitely help you out and tend to give you an idea of what the market is doing and how the market conditions may affect your purchasing decisions. All right, number six, the simplest thing, where do you want to live? All right, how far away do you want to be from work? What do you want your commute to be when you have to head to work? Do you want to be close to a school so you can be there for your kids? so they can walk them to school. Is there a walkability thing? Do you wanna be close to amenities, dining, all kinds of things like that? These are all things you wanna kinda of consider or maybe you're the type of person that, hey, you know, you don't wanna be in the middle of the awesome ball, so you wanna quiet, you wanna be on the outskirts, maybe find 10 acres, have your house right in the middle, nobody bothering you, or maybe you're happy, you wanna be right there, and get a nice development where your kids can have other children to play with and stuff like that. So big things you wanna consider here. All right, now, and number seven, it may be the most important one here, and that's you got to really kind of understand and know what type of home do you want to live in because there's all different options and choices. You can be a condo, a townhome, a single-family home, something with an HOA, a multifamily property. My first home that I purchased was a multifamily property. I couldn't really afford the home on my own, so I was right out of college. So when I did it, is I bought a multi-property. I lived in one apartment. I rented out the other two apartments in there, and those two apartments helped me pay the mortgage, which a nice thing about it is if you're an investor or someone looking to get into a home right now that you can count a certain percentage of the other apartment's rent that you're going to collect as income to help increase that mortgage that you're looking to get to help you qualify to purchase. This is the strategy that I used to purchase my first home, which worked out great for me because I ended up selling it several years later and taking the equity in the home that I built it in over the couple of years and turned around and purchased my next home with it. So there you go. Seven things to do before buying a house in Saratoga. Let's go through and review them really quick here. Number one, check your credit score. Number two, determine how much you can afford. Three, options for a down payment. Four, how much money can you borrow. Five, condition of the market. That's an important one. Remember that one. Uh, number six, where do you want to live in relation to what you know, is going on in your life? And number seven, the type of home that you want to purchase. So again, my name is Chris McMahon. I'm here to help. If you guys got any questions or anything like that that I can help you out with, give me a call, text, email. My information's in the description. Uh, feel free to get a hold of me anytime. Whatever's easiest for you, I'll be more than happy to help you out. And subscribe and click the bell to get notified. And guys, I'm putting videos out all the time here. All kinds of videos, real estate related and just about the community in general. So make sure you get, you're uh, getting notified when those next videos come out. And I'll see you guys on the next video.